Hello and welcome to the Mithril Money Securities Investment 101 course. This is lecture 14, calculating yield to maturity from a bond price. How do we calculate the yield to maturity from a bond price? Before we get to that, I just need to do a little story for you. I'm going to draw a very unhappy golfer. And this very unhappy golfer, he's called Panther Forest. So there he is, Panther Forest. He used to be world champion, but he's letting things slip a little bit at the moment. So. He needs to get back onto form. Now he wears a red beret. There we are. And he used to be a very, very good golfer, but he's a bit sad at the moment because he can't get the ball in a particular hole. Now he's trying to hit a green. Here's the green here. Let's just draw the flag. So here's the flag. And we'll just draw a bit of color there. Why not? And this hole is exactly 100 yards away. Panther is such a good golfer, or used to be such a good golfer, that he always hits the ball exactly the same way every time he hits it. So here's the ball he's trying to hit. And first of all, he takes a five iron to it. So he hits the ball with a five iron. He's hoping to get it directly into the hole. And because he's in 2D world, he hits very, very straight. OK, so let's hit it with a five iron and see where we end up. Oh dear, he's a bit short. Where's he got to? He's got to 97.28 yards away from the hit. So he's a few yards away from the hole. So that's no good. That was with a five iron. By a process of logic, iterative logic, he then hits the ball with, he chooses a three iron. And with the three iron, he hits the ball to 102 yards, 0.83 from the tee. By a process of fantastic logic and imagination and so on, he hits the ball next with a four iron. Let's just try that now. You probably know where this is going. And that goes bang in the hole. So that's fantastic. And what we can do now is we can take away this dull face and make him a very, very happy panther forest who now goes on to become world champion. And this is exactly how we figure out yield to maturity from a particular bond price. If we are given a bond price of 100, we can guess that it's going to be 4%. But if it's 105 yards, it's a lot more tricky. And if it's 95 yards, it's a lot more tricky. And what we have to use is a process of iteration to be able to figure out what the correct golf club is or the correct yield to maturity. Now, just before we get to Excel, where we're going to work out a couple of these uh, methods for doing this, let's just take a look at this diagram we got from last time. What we're going to do is we're going to jiggle about with the yield to maturity. And the yield to maturity, as we send it up, it's going to send all of these calculations into a particular direction. As we increase all of these terms by increasing yield to maturity, what we're going to do is decrease all of these terms here just mathematically by division. And again, if we lower the overall yield to maturity for the bond, that's going to lower these terms via that yield to maturity. What that's going to do is increase these terms. When we increase yield to maturity, we're going to send down the bond price. And when we decrease yield to maturity, we're going to increase the bond price. How we get to an exact bond price, such as 105 or 95, is by jiggling about with the yield to maturity, sending it up and down until these three things exactly balance to give us exactly the price we want whether that's 105 or whether that's 95. And if we start from 105 and want to get to 95, what we're going to have to do is increase the yield to maturity and vice versa the other way around. So hopefully you've kind of got the conceptual idea here and there's no other way of doing it with a simple calculation. Every computer you've ever used which works out a yield to maturity is doing it in this iterative fashion as is used by Panther Forest to figure out how to get the ball in the hole. Let's bring up Excel. Now this Excel spreadsheet will look familiar from the last lecture. I've just added a couple of extra bits and pieces down here. Now there's no formulas in here. I've just added some formatting. And the other thing I've done is I've added this field here, which is tracking the yield to maturity as a Y axis element and the bond price as an X axis element. And we'll see that when we use the three iron, we go down to 102.83 yards. And when we use the five iron, 
we go to 97.28 yards. Now what we'd like to do is figure out what's the yield to maturity when we're at 95 and I'm going to make a prediction from this chart that that's about 5.75 percent. We also want to know the yield to maturity when the price is 105 and just from this chart I reckon that's going to be about 2.25 percent. Now there's three ways I'm going to show you to do this. The easy way is to use a thing called the rate command in Excel, but that's far too boring and far too simple to play with now. Let's play with something a lot more fun. Now, how are we going to play with things that are fun? We need to bring up the developer tab, which isn't up here at the moment. So go to file, options. Let me just shrink that screen down so we can see it on the video and bring it across here like that. Go then to customize ribbon and then make sure that we click on the developer box there. OK that and we can now see the developer tab here. So let's click on that and I'm going to insert a scroll bar. I'm going to put that here because it's a convenient space. Drag it across to there. There we are. I'm now going to format this control. So format control using right clicking. I'm going to go from zero to 10,000. And I want to change this cell here. OK, that. Perfect. Now, if we just get rid of the handles by clicking on another cell. If I drag this thing along here, you can see that I'm really changing this cell here. Now, I actually want to change this cell here. So let's just put a new formula in here. This is now going to be equal to this divided by 100,000. There we are. And as I now jiggle this up and down, you can see I'm jiggling the yield to maturity up. I'll just comment that cell for you so you can see what I just did there. If you want to know how to comment your cells, have a look at our Excel library. There's a special lecture there on how to comment cells with VBA. Some people, they don't want to see this field. What they do is this. If they right click this, then you can drag this and hide the hidden field. And they might think that's a bit neater. But that's a bit hard to maintain as a program. Just for the purposes of this video, what we'll do is we'll make sure we can see that hidden field. There we are. Super. Now, how do we then get to this yield to maturity? We want a price of 95 and then that will tell us the yield to maturity. So what we do is we look at this field here with our eyes and we drag this down, down, down. Oh, so we went through it there, didn't we? So I just need to increase it a nudge. Just a few more clicks and we should be there. Oh, gone too far. Go back again. There we are. We've got a bond price of 95 and a yield to maturity of 5.867, which is not bad. I predicted 5.75, which is the best I could do with my golfer's eye. And so at 95, price 95, we're at 5.867. Now that's all a bit fiddly, isn't it, using a scroller there? I was just trying to do this to show you what's going on as we're trying to get a yield to maturity. Now Excel can do this internally. It can kind of use a special internal scroll bar inside its memory using a special command called the rate command. Let's just use that now then. So equal to rate, and that's the number of periods, which is there, which is three. The payment, which is going to be the coupon, which is that par value multiplied by the coupon percentage rate, coupon rate. And that is then followed by the present value. That's the price of the bond. Now we have to put a negative symbol in there because the money's leaving your pocket. So it's a negative thing. And then in three years time, you're going to get $100 back. So that's a positive thing for the next value, the future value, brackets and return. And lovely, we get the same exact kind of percentage rate, which is fantastic, which is extremely lucky, of course. I know it's all being driven by the same thing, but it's nice to see that that is the same. Let's just control J that too, so we can see the formula that I used there. Let's just put that up so we don't want to cover that white line on the, on the chart there. Now that's the easy way to do it. It's a bit boring. Some of you may want to use a different method, another very explicitly kind of iterative method, and that's using the goal seek function. So before I use this goal seek function, which is hiding here, what I need to do is I need to put a formula in here. Now, the price is exactly what I want, 95. Let's change that price. Let's make it something else. Let's make it 100 and 
102 so the price is now 102.39 that's great the target price i'm after is 95 this is how goal seek generally works what i can do is i can put a little function in here equals that the price take away the target price and what i'm going to do is get goal seek to change that to zero it's going to do that by affecting this cell that cell will then affect this cell that cell will then jiggle up and down until these all jiggle up and down until this gets to 95. When that hits 95, 95 take away 95 will equal zero. That's generally how we get goal seek to work. So let's try that now. What if analysis, goal seek, set cell 7.39 there in cell C14, set it to value zero by changing which cell? That one, E3. Okay, that. And you can see it took a bit of jigging and a bit of poking, but it got there in the end. We got the bond price of 95 by knocking this up and down. That affected this, that affected all of these. These jiggled up and down in various directions until that equaled the same as that, which made that zero. We don't want to have to do goal seek every single time. So what we can do is we can record a macro and then we can attach that macro to a button. Let me do that now. Let's change the price to 98.69. So we've got a checksum that's non-zero. What I'm going to do then is I'm going to record a macro. So let's come out of there completely, go to developer, go to record macro, give it a nice name, something like get yield to maturity. Okay that. Go to the data tab, what if analysis, Goal seek set cell C14 equal to value there of zero by changing cell that one there. Okay, that. Okay, that. Price has worked, fantastic. Go to developer and stop the recording. Or while we're here, I'll just comment this so you can see what the what the formula was in there, which is nice. Now, let's attach that to a button. So what I will do, I mean, I could run that directly. So again, if I just change the price quickly, what I could now do is go to macros, get YTM run, but that's all a bit fiddly. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a button? Yes, it would. So we go to insert, go to a button, put a button in here. There we are. Attach it to the correct macro, get YTM change the name button 30 is that the position of jensen button in a formula one race hopefully not by the time you're watching this hopefully it'll be first every time so this will be get ytm come out of there lovely let's get the price wrong again so the price is 97.97 press this that will run in the background the goal seek function fantastic we've now figured out goal seek we've got scrollers and we've got the rate command we've got everything we need now just for a final run let's get 105 as the price and then figure out the yield to maturity each time for that with the three different methods so what we need to do we need to drop this down don't we we need to get our yellow blob to move down to here so let's keep going until we get to about 105 that's gone too far oh now let's come back the other way on too far let's again iterate down come on come on yes we've got there hooray 105 2.256 now i made a prediction of 2.25 i don't think i'm too bad there i know this is just going to work each time but you know it's nice to see that it is the same and same sort of thing here we want to use the goal seek function hidden under underneath this button macro so get the price wrong again Put 105 in there, press that button, bang, we're there, we're in the correct position for the yield to maturity. Anyway, so that's three different ways of figuring out yield to maturity from a bond price. This is Mithril Money. The next lecture, again, more on bonds. See you next time.